Hey guys, welcome to another dual commentary with Class and Diggity. This is going to be, uh, man, the losers match between Nada and Savior, and this is my absolute nightmare. I don't want either of these players to get knocked out, and one of them has to go. Uh, Savior starting in the bottom right-hand corner in brown. Bottom left-hand corner we have Nada in uh, in red, and this can be very interesting because it's a, it's kind of a big resource map. It's not quite like Loki, uh, but where you basically have a protected uh, a protected natural as well as a natural it's really easy to hold outside the base uh, but yeah I'm really interested to see kind of the tactics are going to be uh, going as a result of this but anyway but yeah either way whoever goes out I'm not going to be happy about it yeah I know and with Jadong already out of the picture the potential of Savior going out is not at all looking good for Zerg fans um, GG play obviously got through but um, that's that's neither here nor there. I don't expect him to be able to challenge players like Flash, even though he played some good StarCraft in that game. Uh, and it'll be inter interesting to see what sort of strategies Savior and Nada come up with. And I have to agree, I mean, I, I am obviously a Zerg fan, and I tend to be biased towards Zerg players, but where players like Nada are concerned, I, I, I think it'd be very difficult for me to choose between these two guys. Also, I just wanted to say, guys, um, we have been having some lag issues recording these dual commentaries, so we apologize if there's any issues when we actually finish syncing them and upload them, and if, if, it, if things seem a little bit out of kilter, we are having some lag issues tonight. Unfortunately, Nada starting up his first barracks. Andromeda is an interesting map. I think it's a little bit reminiscent of Python, which was a map that Savior was so dominant on. It's got good wide open spaces, positions for flanking, uh, and the ability to play, uh, to expand quite fast. I think the thing that works against Zerg players hugely on this map, and, and especially in the favor of Terran players, is that Terran players can really bunker up on a map like this and get that mid only expansion and get that natural gas expansion and really be very, very comfortable and sit there for a long, long time. Whereas a Zerg has to expose himself much more, even more so than on, on most maps, and, and the Zerg expansion are obviously vulnerable to the double shelling from that choke. We saw some effective play from GG play and I think the key is to push that second sunken line further out. So Savior looks like he's now putting down that hatchery and I think he's gone for a 12 hatch build this time and I think that's the right way to go on a map like this. I think a fast expansion is the way to go for the Zerg player. It'll be interesting to see um, what sort of pressure Nada is going to be able to be able to put on considering that Nada is now sending the scout. Nada scouting in both directions with his SCVs eager to find Savior. Uh, so we'll be interested to see what sort of, and he's, he's got his first marina, so we'll be interested to see what sort of pressure he's planning to put on here. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some, uh, I know that uh, a lot of players favor kind of SK Terran where they're going to go uh, just straight and actually not a gonna, it looks like he's setting up for a quick expansion. Uh, maybe, no I'm sorry, that's a, outside of Savior's base. He's going to put down that bunker, going to try to bunker Savior in uh, off that 12 hatch. He's got Marines uh, incoming now. He managed to kill that drone out in the field. Looks like Savior has the drone drones off the line. Uh, he's halted that bunker uh, production right now. He does have the spawning pool going down. Uh, the question is, is whether he can kill that SCV or not, not whether he can kill the bunker though. Uh, doing a lot of damage though to it in the meantime. Let's see if he can get that marine. He's, he's doing a great job micromanaging those drones around. Uh, now it looks like Nada actually continuing to push in with those two. He, now he's got the two marines, three SCVs, so it's going to be hard for uh, Savior to kind of fight this off. He needs to pick those marines off. Uh, looks like he managed to pick one off, not managing to pick off the second, bring the rest of his drones back. Uh, he, d he is producing Zergings in the background. Looks like that bunker has been cancelled, so it looks like we're going to go into a normal game from this point on. Uh, but uh, I would say neither player, uh, a little a little bit of a hit on Nada because he ended up losing Marines and uh, losing some resources in that bunker, but he did manage to get a couple drones down. Uh, Savior has built Zerglings in the meantime, but usually when you, uh, when you see kind of a push like that, uh, it does affect the Terran more. Uh, getting back to what I was saying initially though, I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple tanks produced instead of just the straight SK uh, Terran Simply because on this map, from that choke, uh, that ceiling choke, you can you can attack two bases and the reinforcements across that ramp if you have a an aerial spot. So uh, tanks very powerful on this map. Yeah, I have to say that the map pool for this OSL really really does suck for Zerg. I mean, you got Andromeda, which. I think is okay, it's not bad, and, and, it, and the jury's still out, we need to see a few more games on it, and obviously Savior's not in the best of form to display that, but really if you if you look at the kind of the number of Zerg players versus the number of Terran, number of Protoss, it, it's not putting well for Zerg. Nada blocked off his ramp, he's got an SCV and he's got a group of Marines behind it, Savior's setting up his first um, Sunken. I, I think Savior probably, in my view, came off slightly the worst in that exchange with Nada in the beginning of the game because he lost, I think, three drones at least, and also he had about eight drones that were not mining at all for him for all of that period of time, uh, even though Nada did lose a single marine and he did lose his bunker which he was forced to cancel when it was almost destroyed uh, I think probably Savior in my opinion probably came out a little bit worse on that um, but it's going to it's gonna be interesting to see how the long term game works out, Nada now setting up that academy uh, and, and Savior, the other 
the other thing that was sad for me to see was that Savior was unable to stop the scout of that that SCV. He had his group of six Zerglings out, and the SCV just waltzed around them and got the scout in. And I'm not sure if that's a testament to Nada's micro. And <laughs> we've got some fan here who just cannot bear to look. And oh my God, I just love to see it. I just love to see StarCraft fans who are so passionate about it that they actually cannot bear to look. Uh, it's like watching a bad episode of America's Got Talent or something like that where you, you know it's embarrassing and you know it's horrible and you want to watch it and you don't want to watch it and it's just oh, you don't know what to do but anyway um, so it'll be interesting to see which of these two veterans comes out on top so far uh, Nara hasn't put too much pressure on Savior but Savior already has got that first sunken up and running and it just it just seems a little bit kind of careless almost of Savior. Savior's now got that layer up, so Savior with that layer up, even though his opponent has got the scouting, he's now got to get now gonna get the spire up as well. So it'll be interesting to see if he can if he's gonna be able to do some effective mutilus harass. Nada now setting up the second barracks meanwhile he's mining at that min only. So Nada's gonna be pumping out lots of SCBs and his macro is gonna be quite huge in this game. Meantime as you can see Nada on, on an on that ramp he had a ton of Marines just chilling out. Looks like it's gonna be a two gas build so only two hatcheries down for Savior and he's really gonna dedicate to mutilisks I guess. Uh, two hatcheries Two gas looks like he's opening up some of the map artifacts in the meantime. Not quite sure what the the reasoning is behind that. Maybe I just don't know the map very well. Nada has that second barracks. He's putting down the third. It looks like he's got a group of medic and marines. Uh, and savior in the meantime. He, now the question is: Is will Nada effectively be going to have? Uh, will he have an effective d defense against these Milos? As he, as we saw, he already had that engineering bay going up. I guess he's just opening that up because he's worried a little bit about a drop. Looks like that engineering bay is up. I don't see any turrets being built in the meantime. Nada pushing up. He's got the two fire bats in the meantime. We'll see if Savior gets some additional sunken colonies to deal with this. Uh, needs to get them down now. Needs to get those Zerglings all the way back around uh, to, to assist with that defense at the front. Looks like that Spire is going to go up. Uh, but again, no third hatchery, so we're going to see a t uh, kind of a two hatch uh, Mutilus build uh, before even the third hatchery goes down. Savior doing what. Uh, this is another thing is, is the wide open maps, I really think Savior tends to play better on because he, he has more maneuverability. And that's what really where I think his strong suit uh, lies is, is maneuvering large groups of units around the map. Uh, to strong position. It looks like uh, Nada now backing off. Just wanted to make sure that he committed that that resource cost with those additional sunken colonies. Uh, now, actually, Savior getting a couple of his zerglings caught out in the middle of the field. Doesn't look like he's going to lose them. A couple turrets going uh, in the background for Nada. But the question is, is now will Nada be able to get his forces back for those mutilisks? Uh, Savior will have the mutilisks inside Nada's base. Uh, I think before those uh, before those medic and marines are basically back to help on the defense, and he might be able to pick off a bit of additionary forces in the meantime. As a result, and Savior, as you can see, he's pinning the he's He's using those Zerglings to pin the Medic Marines at the ramp and going to bring the, the Mulus alongside uh, and try to maneuver them around the turrets. And the question is, is will Nada's turrets placement uh, be strong enough to really deal with this force? Yeah, Savior with the Mutalus Micro going in, managed to pick off a couple of Marines, hasn't killed any of the Firebot bats yet though, uh, and, and he, he obviously didn't want to commit his Zerglings together at the same time. Uh, Nada's got a decent number of turrets up though, I think he's got a good defense up, and Savior really needs to... One of the problems with Savior that I've seen recently is that his Mutalus Karas has really been ineffective, meanwhile he's taking his middle and he's getting that third hatchery down now. But Savior really needs to do a little bit more damage with his Mutalus Karas. He needs to get in there and be aggressive and be willing to risk those Mutalus. He seems to just be concentrating on fighting Nada's Medic and Marine group, and when he's got the Sunkans in, I don't see why he should be committing himself to that. Perhaps um, he's hoping to get another hatchery out somewhere on the map and, and keep Nada busy, and, and, and maybe that's why he's trying to fight this. And it looks like Savior's actually managed to maneuver himself with his Zerglings and his Mutalisks between Nada's Medic and Marine group and his ramp, uh, but he's lost all of the mutal all the uh, Zerglings in the process, and he hasn't really killed too many many Marines. He's killed about five Marines there, uh, but Nada is going to easily replenish them, and, and really this is not enough. Savior needs to be damaging Nada's economy. He needs to be taking out those SCVs, um, and I'm not sure if Savior even has actually flown over and seen that command center from Nada. I'm not 100% sure if he's seen that. I think he probably is aware of that because he's got to know that Nada is pumping out SCVs at a massive rate from those two command centers since Nada built that second command center very early on uh, and he's going to have a very strong economy. Uh, Terran player is so much more effective and uh, here again you, you know the ability of the Terran player to really put that command center up on above their ramp uh, and be able to defend it so comfortably with their ground forces it just I think adds another dimension to Terran gameplay on this map and th there's another kind of thing that I think is going to long term imbalance the game because Terrans can play with one gas for a much longer time Zerg obviously need, need the second gas and I ideally need a three gas to Terran's initial one or even two gas. Uh, and Savior, Savior is not going to be is going to struggle to get a three gas on a map this size. He's now putting up that expansion at the top right corner of the map at the 11 o'clock position. Meanwhile, Nada, uh, Nada's economy untouched.
finished. And Xavier's Mutalist Harass, as far as I'm concerned, relatively ineffective. Yes, he's kept Nana back, but I don't think Nana's going to mind being back, considering how early he got that second command center up. He was just looking to consolidate his economy. He's been able, able to do that. Uh, Xavier now with a group of, a couple of Hydralists as well. He's going to try and get those Lurkers up to defend that base. And I think that, that's a wise move. Uh, Mutalist to Ultralisk build not being uh, not being opted for by Xavier here. But meanwhile, Nana's taking control of kind of the center of the map. He's got a large group of Medic and Marines. Xavier doing a good job of just trying to uh, pick off Nana's reinforcements. Uh, and he's, he's got Lurkers morphing. The question is whether he's going to have his defenses up in time. Looks like Nana might actually be able to commit himself here to a bunker break uh, if he gets a scan off. Xavier trying to do the Nana with the stims going in. He's going to try and affect the bunker break here. Two of the Sunkers coming out front. The last Sunkan isn't up yet. He hasn't got the Lurkers up yet. And I'm sure that Nana's got a scan. And if he can get those lur Lurkers down and up over the ramp, he might be in a good position. He's burning the Lurkers. One of the Lurkers already gets taken out. The second Lurkers coming on the fire. Xavier's forced to absorb the hits with his Mutalis. The, the lurk he's, he's got more Zerglings coming in. He's lost all of his Lurkers. He's lost all of his Mutalis. He's going to lose all of his Zerglings. And Nana's going to actually take this game right here. Xavier's defense broken. Nana breaks Xavier's defense in the front door. There's Lurkers not coming out in time, not popping out in time for Xavier, not having the defenses. And Xavier is going out of the OSL. Another Zerg biting the dust. Do we dare blame the maps? I don't know if we can blame the map on this one. I just feel like Xavier just really didn't commit to any sort of resource for us. He just seemed content to kind of go after uh, some medic marines in the background right now. As you can see, desperately trying to get Sun Colony up in the line. Calling GG right there. But yeah, Xavier getting dumped out. Wrong though, uh, I hope they remove that quickly and shift it to someone else. Unless someone uh, like, a, I guess, a silver for Monty Hall type guy arises and comes out with some brilliant strategy, but yeah, it just seems like Zerg's, not just Zerg, but top level Zerg's getting picked off left and right. GG play is advancing though, uh, so maybe he'll come up with something, but he's not really known for his creativity, he's known for just uh, straight, solid, reliable play. Uh, and actually I wanted to, I guess I wanted to kind of rant on that, is how much do maps play into the players that we end up seeing uh, move along? So not in the meantime, I'm going to go to the final round, and we'll, well, I guess we'll check it uh, at that point, but in the meantime, cut this a little bit short for editing purposes. Thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for listening.